Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to prove the Meyer via torus sequence. So this is the most important sequence in the calculation of homology groups and it's going to let us calculate the homology of many many spaces. As it stands now we pretty much don't have any space whose homology groups we know except for contractible spaces and that's not exactly a good place to be standing. So this is very similar to how before Van Kampen's theorem we knew almost no fundamental groups. So uh, this is going to take a little bit of geometric finagling, so let's get to it. So here's our setup. We have our space X decomposed into two subspaces, U and V, where these sets are open. Seems familiar? Yes. Uh, and we want to compute the homology of X in terms of the homology of uh, U and V. So, again, this should be seen as the analog of Van Kampen's theorem for uh, pi 1. And let's see if we could draw some inspiration for how to proceed. So there we expressed loops in X as products of loops in U and V. I'll draw the picture again. So we had a space uh, X, well, let's just uh, say these are our sets U and V, and their union is X, and we had a base point inside of the intersection, and we had our loop here, and what we did was break it up into two loops, one which sort of went around halfway and then came back down to the base point, and then the other which left from the base point and sort of stayed completely in V. So we need to do something similar here. So the first hurdle is that uh, a uh, chain uh, let's just say it's a basis element chain, so uh, delta n to x may not land in u, may not land, let's say, completely in either u or v. So here is the space u and v again. And we could have like a big triangle inside of the space. I'll, I'll draw it here in blue. And as you can see, this blue triangle can't be expressed as chains inside of U or chains inside of V. So this is going to make it difficult to express the homology of X in terms of the homology of U and V. So here's our solution is divide up chains into little pieces, each of which, the pieces, fit in U or V. So I'll draw a picture of it inside of here. So the blue thing was our original chain, and what I'm going to do is break it up into these smaller triangles here. And now, if you pick any single triangle, like this triangle is contained in both U and in V, that's fine. This triangle is contained in U, this triangle is contained in U, and now this triangle is contained in V, V, V. And so, my original simplex 
now breaks up into little simplices, each of which maps into U or V. So that's the geometric picture, which we're going to try to capture uh, formally here. So uh, the division of a simplex like this is called barycentric subdivision. And so it takes a triangle like this and I just draw a dot in the middle and then I draw a line from each zero cell to uh, this dot in the middle and also I put in new vertices between each edge and I also do that. And, and here's the, the nice thing is that I can further iterate this. So if I took this simplex here and maybe this still didn't fit inside of all, all inside of one of U or V, I can just further subdivide another time. And then if I continue to do this, everything should work out. And it turns out it will. All right, so all this is gonna fit into a theory called U small homology. Uh, and this isn't really a standalone or particularly important theory on its own, but it's a stepping stone to get us to the meyer viatoris theorem. So let X be uh, decomposed as the union over alpha of U alpha for uh, U alpha open. So this is an open cover of X. Define CNU to be the free, oh, CNU of X to be the free abelian group, which is generated by uh, simplices delta n to x, which lie in, let me, let me be more precise, so that sigma of delta n, the image, is completely contained within ui for some i. And now note that if uh, some map of a simplex is in this U small chain group, then the boundary is also uh, comp contained inside of uh, the neighborhood U so that this will lie in CN minus one U of X. And when you have this set up, you get a homology theory, which I'll call U small homology. And which I'll denote by H N U of X. So here's going to be our first goal. We want to get a map which I'll call S U from N chains on X, like honest N chains, the usual singular homology, to U small homology groups. So first of all, I'll just uh, describe this on basis elements as usual. So a basis element uh, 
looks like sigma from delta n into x. Uh, so what we'll do is first, uh, let's make some bullets first, uh, divide all one simplices in delta n uh, in half by placing a vertex at the center of each edge. Okay, and now next, put a point in the middle of each two simplex face and draw a line between each uh, vertex and that new vertex in the middle. So I'm describing an inductive process here and let's just keep track of it. So uh, let's say my thing started looking like a triangle, then here it looks like a triangle with some dots. And you should think of this as I've divided up the one simplices now. The one simplices are now half as small. But now what I want to do is divide up the two simplices. And this is what I drew before. I draw a dot in the middle and I draw a line from every other vertex to this new vertex in the middle. Great. Uh, now, the next thing I'll need to do, which I'll show you a picture of instead of drawing because it's, it's quite difficult to draw, uh, I'll put a point in the middle of each uh, three simplex face. and draw a line from each vertex to this new point. Okay, so uh, here below is a picture of what this will look like. And essentially, if you... Um, if you break it up, going from left to right, that's I, I'm I'm only like exploding the view so that you could see it. Uh, everything is sort of happening in the middle of this picture on the left here. Okay, and then we continue inductively. Up to n simplices. All right, and I'm going to wave my hands a little bit here. Uh, so in the end, we define S of sigma to the n to be the sine sum of the, uh, the resulting simplices. So I'm not going to go into signs here. Uh, it's just going to make things more confusing than it needs to be. But basically, you orient everything so that all of the middle cancels out, and uh, you just get the stuff on the boundary that you, that you care about. So now this is a map 
we can extend this to a map from n chains on x to n chains on x. And, and so what it does is it takes a sum of these simplices and just divides them all up with this barycentric subdivision. And uh, it gives you a sum of simplices, which is an n chain. So great. Uh, it takes you to the right place. Uh, now, what I want is a map to CNU, right? So we define SM of sigma to be equal to the subdivision. S stands for subdivision. So it's the subdivision of subdividing M minus one times uh, sigma. So here is a fact. If X is U alpha, the union over alpha of U alpha, so this is an open cover, and sigma from the n simplex to x is a map, then for some m, each simplex of SM of sigma lands in a single UI. This is like not completely obvious, but not too hard to believe. There, uh, the magic words here are the Lebesgue number lemma. So if you really want to know the details, that's where they lie. But something to notice is it's crucial that the n simplex is this compact object and that u alpha is this open set with like little fuzzy edges around it. And so if you keep on dividing, uh, you can get the compact thing to sit inside of the fuzzy edges is the uh, <laughs> maybe a little unhelpful uh, description of it, but uh, it's true. So uh, we can define SU of sigma to be the uh, minimal such M uh, to be, let's say, S M of sigma for the minimal such M where S M of sigma uh, fits in UI. By, by that I mean each little piece fits inside of one UI, but the whole thing may, may span different UIs. All right. Now, I define this on generators, so we can extend linearly to get a map SU from CN of X to CNU of X. So that's the map which is going to give us our isomorphism in the end, actually. So here's the lemma. The details of which are, are easy to check, but I'll skip them. So if F from X to Y is a map and U alpha and V beta are open covers of X and Y respectively, then 
I can look at the subdivision map and compose it with F sharp. Remember that's the induced map on chains. And this is the same thing as F sharp composed with SU. In other words, uh, this thing is kind of a chain map. Well, not exactly. Uh, that's, that's actually this next statement. The next statement is that uh, boundary composed with S is equal to S composed with boundary. So S is a chain map. And now here is um, a little fact to write as a proposition, which I uh, also won't prove, sorry. Uh, SM from CN of X to CN of X is chain homotopic to the identity. And remember, chain homotopic maps induce isomorphic maps on homology, and therefore SM induces the same map as the identity map, aka it, it induces an isomorphism. And that's the heart of the last proposition, which will end the more hand wavy part of this class. But I just wanted to get to this result really, which is that HN of U, HN U of X is isomorphic to HN of X. So I think this is quite surprising. The, the homology of a space is completely dependent upon homology where each simplex fits inside of a little set. You can imagine, you know, you can be this uncountable collection of very, very tiny sets and really you only need to probe, you don't need to probe X using big simplices. You can probe it by using sums of little simplices is what this is saying. All right, so now we are well equipped to handle the meyer viatoris theorem. So here's the statement. Let X be given by A union B with A and B open. Then for each P, there are connecting homomorphisms Boundary star from HN of X to HN minus one of A intersect B so that the following sequence is exact. Uh, and before I write down the exact sequence, let me just remind you uh, from last class that I have these inclusion maps. A intersect B includes into A and also includes into B. And A includes into X by K and B will include into X by L. All right, and now let's look at all of the induced maps and homology and see how they fit together. They fit together in this exact sequence. So I have this connecting homomorphism boundary star feeding into HN of A intersect B, uh, which I can map to the direct sum of HN of A and HN of B by the direct sum of the inc induced inclusion maps. 
And then uh, I have the inclusion maps K and L, and I'll do K star minus L star, which will land me in HN of X. And then finally, I have this map boundary star, which takes me from HN of X down to HN minus one of A intersect B. And that's the long exact sequence. So let's prove this. So let's let uh, U be equal to uh, the sets A union B. This is X, but what I mean is the open cover U is the sets A and B. Uh, now consider the maps. Cn of A intersect B maps over by I star direct sum J star to uh, Cn of A direct sum Cn of B and this maps over by K star minus L star. Oh, these should be sharps, of course. So these are chain level maps, not homology level maps. Uh, and this will map over to Cn u of x. All right, and we claim that this is a short exact sequence. There's a couple things to check then. First of all, uh, I need to check that the first map is injective. Well, since I sharp and J sharp are just the maps, which take a simplex in a intersect B and regard it as a simplex in A or in B, this map is injective. If you took a non-zero simplex, it's represented by some map of a simplex in your space, and just regarding that as a simplex in a bigger space doesn't make it become zero, right? And so that tells you there's no kernel, and this is a homomorphism, so uh, it's injective. Now, also, uh, if C is in the nth chain group of A intersect B, then uh, what happens if I do K sharp minus L sharp of I sharp plus J sharp of C? So let's again think about this geometrically. I take a uh, I take C inside of here, and I regard it as a chain in A, and I also regard it as a chain in B. So, but then K sharp minus L sharp says, now regard it as a chain in X. C, regard C as a chain in X. And I just took two copies of C, and now I'm gonna subtract them, and so I get zero. So the sequence um, well so the image of uh, I sharp direct some J sharp is in the kernel of K sharp minus L sharp and if you think about it this is actually the entire kernel there's a little bit to check there So uh, we are exact at uh, 
uh, Cn of A direct sum Cn of B. Now the next thing to check is that the map K sharp minus L sharp is surjective, but it is. Uh, so what I write is by the definition of u small chains. So C and U of X is generated by simplices which live entirely in A or entirely in B. And those are contained in CN of A and CN of B. And there's this minus sign, but don't worry about that. If I want to hit an element like B, uh, I could just map over minus B and then minus minus B is B. And so this map is indeed surjective. And now what's the point of this? Well, this is a short exact sequence of chain complexes. So last class, we learned that anytime you have a short exact sequence of chain complexes, you have a long exact sequence of the homologies. So then we get a long exact sequence, which looks like uh, HN of A intersect B. So if I take the homo in the very top left corner here, if I take the homology of CN of A intersect B, I get HN of A intersect B. And then if I take the homology of CN of A direct sum CN of B, it's not too hard to see that this is HN of A direct sum H sum HN of B. And then if I take the homology of CN U, I define this to be this U small homology and then boundary star will map me down to h n minus 1 of a intersect b. This is almost what we want, but it has this h n u instead of h n. So, but by the previous proposition, h n u is isomorphic to h n, so replacing hn u of x by hn of x above gives the desired result. And there we have it, the Meyer-Vitoris uh, sequence. So let's get into some applications of it. The first thing you should try really any new topological theory on is uh, the n-dimensional spheres. So let's see if we can get this to work. Let's try to calculate hi of sn. So uh, by a similar decomposition, to uh, what we use for Van Kampen's theorem, we can find the homology groups of these spheres. Uh, so what was this decomposition? I'll just draw it right here. So I'm going to take the northern hemisphere plus a little bit, and I'm going to call it A. I'm going to take the southern hemisphere plus a little bit, and I'm going to call it B. So let's let A equal northern hemisphere plus a little bit. 
and let B equal the southern hemisphere plus a little bit. So I wrote this down in coordinates if that makes you more comfortable when we did this for Van Kampen's theorem. Uh, if you just look at the equation for SN and you take the last coordinate and you let it be either uh, more than a quarter or less than three quarters, that's how you get these two sets. Great. So uh, now A is homotopy equivalent to DN. And so is B. Uh, and A intersect B is homotopy equivalent to SN minus one, right? It's, it's actually literally, it's homeomorphic to SN minus one cross I and then squish that down. Uh, so let's keep that in mind. Now by the Meyer via Torres sequence, we get a long exact sequence, which looks like uh, HN plus one of SN minus one. So this is the intersection here. This is A intersect B down to, uh, I'm not going to write the names of the maps, but HN plus 1 of A directs um, HN plus 1 of B down to H, uh, and of course A and B are DN. Uh, and this goes to HN plus 1 of SN plus 1. And let's keep going down. So this is my whole space X. Then I have HN of SN minus one into HN of DN, direct sum HN of DN down to uh, HN of SN down to HN minus one of Sn minus one, and so on and so forth. Okay, now uh, we're basically gonna prove this by induction. So recall that we showed that Hi of S1 is equal to Z if I is equal to zero or one and zero otherwise. So we did this using simplicial homology and we haven't yet shown that simplicial homology is equivalent to singular homology, but it is, and let's take that for granted here. So uh, we will prove by induction that hi of sn is equal to z if i is equal to zero or n and zero otherwise. And uh, what we did is we just showed the base case, right? So suppose it was true for Sn minus one. Then the Meyer via Torres sequence above looks like, at least in this dimension, uh, Hn plus one of Sn minus one, it's gonna be zero. Uh, let, me, let me fill it in up here, and then I'll uh, bring it down. So 
That's going to be a zero. These are zero because dn is contractible. Uh, this we don't know yet. Uh, this is going to be a... Oops. This should be... This should be an Sn. Should be an n minus 1. Uh, these are zeros. This we don't know yet. This is going to be a z, and I actually now realize I need one more level here, hn minus 1 dn, direct sum hn minus 1 of dn, which is going to be a 0 plus a 0. All right, so in the relevant dimensions, we get 0 to hn plus 1 of sn to 0 to 0. So this implies uh, if, if I ever have two groups wedged between two zeros in a long exact sequence, uh, those groups are isomorphic. But the group on the right here is the zero group. And so hn plus 1 of sn is actually equal to 0. And this works all the way up. hn plus k of sn is equal to 0 for k greater than 0. Uh, now, how about in this next dimension, uh, hn of sn, what's around there? We get 0 to hn of sn to z to 0. Again, if I ever have two groups wedged between uh, zeros, then the groups are isomorphic. So hn of sn is actually equal to z. Uh, and then in lower dimensions, hk of sn will go to uh, hk of sn minus 1, but that's going to be a 0. Uh, so this is for k. This is k minus 1. It's for k less than n. And so this will imply that uh, hk of sn is equal to 0 for k uh, sorry about the uh, continual adding of hypotheses, but I want k to be greater than 0 and less than n. And then for H0, I'm going to get H0 of Sn. Uh, so what, what are we going to get here? We're going to get H0 of Sn. And then coming into it are uh, two copies of Z. Ah, yes. It's going to be something like z to h0. Actually, I don't even know why I'm bothering. Sorry to waste time. <laughs> this is a connected space, and we know what h0 is. Also, since sn is connected, h0 of sn is equal to z. And there we have it. <laughs> In summary, hi of sn is equal to z if i is equal to 0 or n, and it's equal to 0 otherwise. Great.
So uh, this is hopefully going to illustrate now the power of homology. We're going to use this fact actually quite heavily in the next couple of classes uh, to define something called the degree of a map. And uh, all of this really illustrates the power of homology. First of all, I can tell apart all these spheres. And similarly, I can also tell apart um, real Euclidean spaces. So here's a corollary of that. Rn is not homeomorphic to Rm for n not equal to m. So we've seen this for uh, n is equal to 2. And the homology groups lets us prove it for higher dimensional spaces. And the proof is as you'd, you'd expect. Rn minus a point is homotopy equivalent to uh, S n minus 1 and R m minus a point is homotopy equivalent to S m minus 1 and if n is not equal to m what we've just shown we, we've shown that homology groups are uh, homotopy equivalence invariants so these spaces are not homeomorphic and so neither are the real spaces so yes since the homology groups don't agree they can't be homeomorphic therefore the real spaces are not homeomorphic so now's a good time to introduce a uh, operation in algebraic topology which sort of supersedes the calculation we did before uh, and it's called a suspension these are very important in modern algebraic topology so here's the definition if x is a topological space then we define the suspension of x denoted sigma of x to be x cross i uh, modulo a relation and I'll tell you what this relation is where for all x and y in the space x x0 is related to y0 and x1 is related to y1. And furthermore, if f from x to y is a map, we denote by uh, sigma of f the map so this goes from the suspension of x to the suspension of y which takes uh, like defined by sigma f of a, this is a point in x, t, that's a point in i before we quotient out, uh, is f of a, t. And you might be worried that uh, this might not be well defined because we're quotienting out, but uh, everything we quotiented out in the domain gets quotiented out in the codomain, so everything works out. Uh, so roughly the picture is you uh, you have your space x, you cross it with i, but then you crush everything at 1 to a point, and you crush everything at 0 to a point, 
And so here's like x cross 0 inside of there. And that's the picture you should keep in mind for the suspension. Uh, and in fact, this picture is literally a suspension. The suspension of S1 is S2. And that's, that's the picture that proves it. More generally, uh, the suspension of Sn is equal to Sn plus 1. So here's a natural question. You have the homology groups of x. What are the homology groups of the suspension of x? And here's the proposition. For n greater than or equal to 1, the homology uh, in the n plus 1 uh, dimension of the suspension of x is the homology at the nth dimension of x. In, in other words, suspension just raises your homology up one degree, which we see for the circle, right? Uh, at least in, in dimension one, it takes the z in level one to the z in level two. And when you suspend s2, it takes the z in level two to the z in level three. And the proof is exactly the same as before. So, we're going to take, and this is mostly going to be a sketch, but take uh, a similar decomposition of the suspension of x to Sn. So let A be equal to uh, x cross 0 to 3 fourths and B equal x cross uh, one fourth to one. So again, this is like uh, bottom half plus a little and top half plus a little. So uh, it turns out both A and B are contractible. And this isn't too hard to see from the picture. Uh, what we did was uh, you crossed it with I, and then you crushed it all at the top, right? So imagine you were, for example, uh, this circle up here. A everything above here contracts right up to that tiny little point. All right. And so... Uh, we also have that A intersect B is homotopy equivalent to X. I'm just going to redraw the picture here. Uh, this is A intersect B, and it squishes all down right here to X. So the meyer viatoris theorem gives us the long exact sequence uh, hn of x to, uh, so this one here is the direct sum of hn of a and hn of b down to uh, hn of the suspension of x to hn minus 1 of x. So this is that boundary star. And uh, this goes down to 0. So this is, again, the di that direct sum. And so this is an isomorphism. Uh, some funny business happens around 0. You could work that out for yourself. Uh, but this is what it looks like in generic sort of higher dimensions. Great. So um, that's going to do it for today. Here's something I want you to notice of all these examples. We never actually used that boundary star map. 
So most of the time, the way you use the Meyer via Torus theorem will be just to uh, just to know that some sequence exists. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.